how can we raise the quality of hurling, the volume of quality players in four or five or six counties to make the All-Ireland Championship a competitive maybe 12, 14, 16, I don't know, whatever it is, number of teams. The GA Hour is sponsored by Paddy Power. For exclusive content from their GA ambassadors and other high-profile contributors, check out news.paddypower.com. Declan Bonner was talking about the Leinster Championship cheddar and he wants it increased to six um, teams so like his point is is that they learned an awful lot this year from their um, um, experiences playing the very top teams and his point is now that they're going to go down back down now to Joe McDonough so instead of learning from them coming back mm. against these same teams next year now he's going back into Joe McDonough which is a lower standard and they're almost having to work back up you know it's like a year on a year off at best yeah. so are you ever going to build on it then? I don't look. Um, I just happen to. I seem to be keep being dragged back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I keep dragging you into it, etc. Incidentally, William, the later that the Danny Gaw football manager is going in to manage Carlo, because I think it was Colin Bonner made that. Oh, the, what did I say? Colin Bonner, <laughs> Declan Bonner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, not, not, not to worry. Um, yeah, look, these are things William have been talking about a lot for the last year, and it's the entirety of this. Um, you know, there's a lot of positives about this, um, and a lot of the time when I'm talking about this, I seem to be degrading the Joe McDonald Championship and, you know, its worth and its value and all of that. And I, I don't mean to do that. What I, what I really want to say here is that a serious look needs to be, a serious look needs to be taken against, you know, how can we raise the quality of hurling, the volume of quality players in four or five or six counties to make the All-Ireland Championship a competitive maybe 12, 14, 16, I don't know, whatever it is, number of teams. And I can certainly understand where Colm is, is going here. And look, Carlo are a fantastic example to be to be trotting out here in support of our argument here. Here is a team in Carlo, and I've said this a number of times, that is the, certainly by far and away the best Carlo team I've seen in my time I think the last time that Carlo had a strong team was before my time was her early 60s I think they were quite competitive at that stage as well um, so obviously in the last couple of years they've done a fair amount of work at development level in Carlo and I certainly am aware of the under 21 teams and minor teams coming through um, and look that could be just generational thing rather than a great lot of work going on yeah. there or it could be just a little bit of both we, we, we don't know Carlo, Carlo people will answer that the opportunity is there at the minute to build on that. You certainly will not build on it by getting your flagship team back down to a secondary competition again and expecting them to maintain the ambition and the uh, performance levels um, at Leinster Championship uh, when you're playing in the Joe McDonough. Everybody knows it doesn't work like that. You reset your ambitions and your visions and your goals and all of those things. One of the crucial things and critical things is that the pace of the game in Joe McDonough is very, very different to championship hurling at the top level. It is hugely different. And unless you were playing at that level the whole time to learn things, and that may be technical things, and look, we we'll, might talk a little bit later on. How do you handle um, Mark and TJ Reid, Johnny Glynn, you know, these type of players, uh, Pat Horg and all of these, even for you to learn yourself individually, the technical things that you need to improve on from year to year, you can only do that by testing yourselves against them. Now, you do need the ambition to go there. Um, you know, this is a big gap. It's a huge gap to close. But unless and you have that type of a process, an improvement process, both yourself personally and the team and the team management and the county, the county board and everybody behind this has that, um, I suppose, foresight to see how this thing gets gets done. Well, then it's not going to happen because you'll drop down to the Joe McDonough and you'll, you'll, look, you, you'll do your damnedest not to let this happen. But this is what will happen. You will say, look, I've been playing at Leinster Championship. I don't really need to work too hard. I can take a year out here, not a year out in attendance, but a year out in terms of performance improvement. Yeah. Um, and look, I'll raise the game again the following year. We'll win it again next year. It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, you could very well just have a change of management. Colin Bonner might go. So the spark I, might go out of training. The, spark, the intensity, absolutely everything. And the, you know, the thing might just fall apart on you very, very quickly. And wherein, for once in thirty or forty years, Carlo were in a very, very strong position to try and reach up to another level. And I would suggest that Carlo have about two or three steps to go to get to really competitive in the Leinster Championship. And they've done well this year, but there is a massive step up here. Um, and to do that. People need to stand back and, and examine every single item here. How are we going to f improve all of these things to push Carlo up two steps and maybe another step, step the following year? 
To do that, your flagship team needs to be at, at the top. Just think for a minute, the home games with Carlo this year, the attendance that was there, the interest that was in Carlo hurling. Um, you know, you, you switch, turn that on its head and go back to Joe McDonough. I can tell you that the attendance will 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 have, it'll probably go down, you know, it'll be down to one-fifth. The, so the interest of young people in Carlo and everybody associates with supporters, parents, everything, in terms of growing the game in Carlo, it just simply slides away. And I can certainly agree with Colm, and I have been there and I've, I've been banging this drum for so long that 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 somebody needs to look at this. There's There's a number of counties that with a fair bit of help over a, a period of time, and I'm talking maybe maybe something like 10 years, in terms of the development of the game. And one of the crucial things, and it's going to hurt, it has hurted Carlo, and it hurts all of these counties. You simply don't have depth of panel to be able to deal with a Leinster Championship now of four games, or a Munster Championship with, with four games, or whatever the case may be. Play a league, try and do well in a stay in Division 1B if you can, that's competitive enough, and then switch straight over to real foot to the floor hurling for four games, and expect that you're going to have a panel of, uh, that's going to be able to deal with that and there's two aspects to that there is the I hate the word fatigue because I just can't stand that word um, but there is something in playing four weeks in a row or as it is now you know four weeks over five weeks or six weeks or whatever it is there is a, a little bit in that there's still amateur players at the end of the day the crucial point is that you don't have a number of the right resources to be able to play different game plans against different teams and to do that you need to really develop hurling in your county and grow the number of quality players available to you I just don't see it Wooly and I, I'm, I'm just going to stop talking about this anymore and if you <laughs> ask me this question anymore I'm going to refuse <laughs> to answer it because I'm just sickened by yeah. the lack of interest in GAA headquarters and GAA Croke Park and Leinster Councils and all of these organisations which have the responsibility and the accountability to get these things organised and worked and just throwing some coaches into a county is insufficient it's not enough because the top counties are actually doing that already and more so how are you going to close the gap you need to sprint I've used this um, um, example a number of times these counties need to sprint while the other teams are jogging along to catch up in them yeah. and we're not anywhere near yeah, that you at the need moment. to be doubling down giving them way extra money and coaching and expertise and, 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 and I'd say sorry Willie for cutting across you I, I, will, I will say this clearly as well if those counties and those county boards and those county supporters and teams and clubs and all of that are not interested in doing this, I wouldn't give them any money. I think I think the counties themselves have to show th- that, you know, their own ambitions and their own vision for hurling in that county first before I'd get in behind it. But I think if, you know, I think if, if John Horn got a group together to look, I know he has a group already together, but I'm not too sure of their terms of reference and I'm not too sure if it's refined and, and really focused on, on this part, but I think it needs to be. And I think if somebody came up with the project plan for that, overseen by serious, serious people. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really talking about project managers to look at something like this with, uh, with, uh, with the experience of delivering a sports programme like this and go around the world. And, and uh, I know I was, uh, when I was involved in Leash, I looked at a lot of things. I looked at the Welsh Rugby Union, I looked at New Zealand Rugby Union, I looked at Canadian hockey and all those other sports. What would they do to really increase the, the numbers and the quality of their, of their teams? And when you do that, you can come back with certainly um, uh, you know, a really good template of what would work in every county and then in each in each of these counties and then you can actually build a specific for each county because each county is different you cannot come with a, the same plan for every county you need to target it towards the county and it's that level of detail is needed um, and I think that's what Colm is referring to if you had that and you were able to say stay in at that level of competitiveness and, and learn in, in that in competitive environment then I think Carlo Hurling would hold its own would, would hold its own at the very least is Isle looking to be as competitive Nobody's saying here Carl is going to win in All Ireland in the next three or four years. Is all they're looking to say is this team can compete with with you know the Kennys or the Dublins or whoever it is or the Wexfords and over a period of years and over that time we'll keep pushing ourselves here to try and reach the top. Yeah, no, exactly. And like I mean, th- this is this is the thing, um, Cheddar. Like you're the only pundit I hear constantly banging that drum. I don't think enough of the the high profile ones because it, it, Dublin is the very obvious example. 15 years ago Dublin were competing with Leash and they were competing with Antrim and they were losing a lot of the time Leash and Antrim at that level and look at them now you know and that's because of investment that's because of a plan and that's because there was money put in there like I don't personally I don't understand how how the hurling pundits don't rage against this because we're talking about nine serious teams and you have an opportunity with the Joe McDonough Cup teams because they are traditional hurling counties as well 
to get them up to a 14 All Ireland team championship. How great would that be? Two groups of seven in the summer, and here, there you are. Then you have your your lower tiers, and like I said about the lower tiers, with respect, a lot of them are football counties, and the idea that to try and get hurling is very difficult in those counties. But the counties that have hurling tradition. It shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be hard because it's there. It's there in the counties. Like half of Leash is hurling. The south. You know, it's no, not I, like you have to develop that. That's there already. No, I agree with that. Well, I think that's one of the preconditions. There would have to be a geographic base, um, you know, f- to, to be able to step up to this level. Um, look, I, 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 I probably don't have time on this, on this show to tell you how many times I've been around the, the, the blocks and the houses and this to different uh, parts. And what was most disappointing, some key influencer in the GA that were at a very, very high level um, would have clearly say to me, look, this is not a runner. Um, Leash is not going to close this gap full stop. Really? And, uh, absolutely. And 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 I, I just, you know. Even though Dublin did. Well, now look, they have a population, well, I suppose. Well, if you go back, I can talk at length here about Dublin because I understand a lot. I, I made it my business to understand how they got to where they got where they got to and, and look I'd probably throw in another comment that the whole hurling programme in Dublin was probably hijacked by football eventually but look that's a different issue um, like, like the original funding that went into Dublin set it up now I fully agree with this um, Willie I said before on the show I work in Dublin I see the I see hurling just growing at grassroots level in Dublin and it's uh, Dublin and I'm a hurling person and I will not, would not want to see that change I think it's simply brilliant what I see going on here and I would not want that to change but the template is there of how to, to do this and it does cost money but um, and I, n- you know, some people will say, oh, and I, I read actually John, I've, it's a huge time for John Horn because he's come from a, um, a games development part of Dublin and um, he has, you know, he has certainly served his time um, in, in the games prom- promotion of the GA and deserves where he is. But I see his comment this morning that his, his volunteerism in Dublin. I was very disappointed with that. Uh, I, look, I thought John, John was obviously talking out of the side of his mouth and that because he knows this better than anybody. Um, the, the setting up of the uh, coaching structure structure in the clubs in Dublin was principally driven by the 2003 hurling development plan in, in, in Dublin. Uh, there may be, the clubs may be contributing now, um, but that originally, I, I, I don't know, I have the figure somewhere, but it certainly was millions. And I'm talking about five or six million over a number of years early on. And then th- that was obviously pared down to a million a year or something like that. Now it's not as much now. Um, and look, th- th- that's something like 60 or 70 full-time coaches in clubs in Dublin, clubs and schools in Dublin, overseen by four or five games managers. I fully applaud that. I think it's brilliant and I, I think it's really needed in Dublin and I, I probably would like to see that with more focus now for hurling in Dublin to get in behind the Dublin senior hurling team at the minute to make sure that whatever uh, performance improvements they make and whatever success they have is underpinned by a really really good system of production of quality players for the future for Dublin why can't that very same template um, targeted towards the Carlos and the West Meads and the Leash and Offleys of this world now be put in place for those counties with sufficient funding yeah. but I'd give no funding to any county if I didn't think that the, the the development plan for that county was innovative and comprehensive enough to develop this and just talking about coaches and that is totally insufficient and I've heard it being spoken about Offley, totally insufficient for Offley. You are in such a state now in, in some of these counties and the competition from other sports is such that you need to look at a complete lifestyle management of underage hurling in those counties and it is very very comprehensive and anything less than that is not enough because the Kenny Tipperary and all the other counties are actually doing more how the hell do you think you're going to catch up in them by just doing something a little bit less it might be more than you're doing at the minute it is not enough so somebody needs a massive wide vision um, and a real understanding I'd probably say, Wooly, that somebody needs to look at this. If we were to introduce a new sport in these five counties, what would we need to do to make it stick and to make it develop and to make it appealing that all parents and kids want to play it within five years? That should be really be the test of your thinking of where you want to go with something like this. The point I'm just going to come back to now is your first point. Carlo have a lot of things in place at the minute. They have a flagship team that's appealing to the county. They have a lot of young players that any other, a lot of other counties would be, would be delighted to get and put them on their team. Um, and that might not always happen. So I'd say strike while the iron's hot here because if it isn't, then that job is much bigger and much more difficult. Yeah, listen, we could talk all day about this. It's very frustrating. It's just very frustrating. And I'm not even a hurling person and it frustrates me. That I'm you, not going to answer that question anymore, <laughs> Willie. <laughs>